All right, so segregation of duties, guys. This is where two or more people will perform a function. So let me give you an example. In the purchases cycle, two people will receive the goods that are being delivered. They'll check the quantity and the quality to make sure it's acceptable. Okay, so how can I go and test that? I can go and observe that two people inspect the quantity and sorry quality of the goods received that's a specific example of segregation duties, you could have just said, observe that the function is split between more than one person. Authorization, inspect whatever document it is for that signature. Isolation of responsibilities, we said somebody will have to be held accountable for the work they do. They are generally, sh or prove the work that they do by signing a document, so inspect the document for the signature. Access control, security, Locking of areas, observe the security measures. Pre-numbered documents, the document has got a number assigned to it already. Inspect the document is pre-numbered. Okay, in addition to that, you could potentially say go and sequence test the documents, because that's you making sure that they are pre-numbered in sequence. Reconciliation, somebody reconciles, so I can re-perform the reconciliation. Whatever they've reconciled, bank statement to the bank confirmation the debtor's statement to the debtor's ledger, the creditor's statement to the creditor's ledger, or literally the invoice to the delivery notes, the invoice to the goods received notes. Or what I could do with reconciliation is if they actually do produce a reconciliation document, I can then say go and inspect the reconciliation document. Okay, and that's literally where they do a recon by comparing what's on the bank statement to what's on the bank account um, in the general ledger, but they actually put it on a piece of paper where they say amount per bank statement this, amount for, per bank GL is this, so that's the recon done. I can then go and look at that document. Uh, automated controls, so access controls, username and passwords, attempt to gain access using a fictitious username and password, and I shouldn't be allowed to. Batch controls, I said there's that batch control sheet and a batch total. Inspect the batch control sheet. I can also then maybe say, reperform the control totals. I can also then go and inspect the reconciliation of the control totals that were manually input to the computer control totals. Or because it is a recon, I could potentially just reperform the reconciliation if they don't have a physical document showing that recon. Screen aids, the screen format, when they turn on or go into the specific area within the system, they want to create a purchase order, the screen must look like a purchase order. So I can just say inspect the format is like the hard copy documents. Mandatory field. You have to complete these fields before you can move on. Attempt to 
to continue without completing all the fields that are required, all those mandatory fields. Minimum entry, you don't put any information down because it gets pulled directly from the master file. So now what you want to do is you want to try and put information down or change the information that has come from the master file. So you're going to attempt to change the data that has pulled from the master file. Because it's automatically put there. Or you could attempt to stop the data from being pulled from the master file. You shouldn't be allowed to. It should be stuck there. Prompts. As soon as you do something wrong, a prompt comes up. So you can say inspect the prompt for all error scenarios. So above here, guys, you should have been prompted when you didn't put in the mandatory fields. You should have been prompted when you try to change the minimum entry data. So you can say, attempt to continue without completing all the fields and then inspect that a prompt appears saying you must complete all the fields. Okay, prompts only come up when you do something wrong. So you need to have first done something wrong to show that you have then seen that the prompt did actually come. Drop down arrows, attempt to add the details not on that drop down arrow list. So it's supposed to be, you should only be able to select from that list. Now you try and say, I don't want what's on that list, let me type in my own information. You shouldn't be allowed to, you should be prompted to say, you must select from this list. Okay, so our program checks, a size check, attempt to input the incorrect size. So the ID number, 13 digits, attempt to input an ID number of 11 digits. And you shouldn't be allowed to. A sign check, attempt to input the incorrect sign. So what I mean, a positive when it should be a negative, or a negative when it should be a positive. Alphanumerical, attempt to put a letter where a number should be. And guys, you're going to have to start to assume some of these controls. So you're going to see that in the question they talk about you must input the inventory code. Then you need to know, ah, an inventory code would be let, uh, numbers. So I can try and mess with that by attempting to put a letter which should be rejected. Validation. This is checking the correct details to what's in the master file. So attempt to input the incorrect details and see that it can't be validated because those details are not in the master file. A reasonability check is making sure what information is put in is reasonable to what they have in their system, the trends they have in the system. So attempt to input information outside of the norm, outside of the trend, and it shouldn't be acceptable. Limit. Attempt to input in excess of the limit, and you should not be allowed to. Range. Attempt to input outside of the range and you shouldn't be allowed to. So what I mean the range is between 10 and 20 so you attempt to put in 9 or 21. Missing data, you have to complete this field. There's no screen aid showing you, it only tells you once you haven't so attempt to continue without completing all the fields. And you shouldn't be allowed to. And sequence checks, you want to make sure that the next document that is being generated by the system is in sequence, so you can 
re-perform the sequencing. Or you can literally just inspect that the document is pre-numbered in sequence. Okay, you shouldn't be able to change it. You could also attempt to change the number, which you should not be allowed to because it should be in sequence. And then your logs and exception reports, the log should show all the detail of what you have already done. So they should have logs. So having a log is a control. I can then just go and inspect that they have the logs. But in taking it one step further, I can then go and inspect the controls that are noted in the log. So when I try to gain access using the correct username and password, I should see that there is a record on the log that I attempted to gain access and did. And then for exception reports, it's where you shouldn't have been allowed to, but you were allowed to. So again, I can go and inspect exception reports. And then I can go that one step further where you can go and inspect that the invalid control allowed is included on this exception report. So what I mean, when I try to test for username and passwords using a fictitious username and password, and I was able to gain access when I shouldn't have been, I then need to go and inspect that that is on the exception report. Okay, and the same for activity and audit trails. We don't really worry about these too much. These two give us sufficient evidence. But if they're talking about that there is an activity report, you can inspect it. If they talk about an audit trail, you can inspect it. Okay, because all these are, all these reports are, are evidence of what has been input and processed. They're not their own controls. They're just the report of what was input and processed into the system. So when I'm looking at this, I'm trying to see where I wasn't allowed to do something, but the control didn't work and I did it, that it's on the exception report. Where I wasn't allowed to do something and I couldn't do it, that it's on the log showing. I tried to do it and I couldn't. Where I was allowed to do something and I did it, that it's on the log showing that I did it. Okay, guys, so a quick little summary. You've seen this before, where we've got the different types of risks with recording a transactional balance. Then the control objective that needs to be there to address that risk and then example of the control activity that will achieve that objective and therefore address the risk with the assertion. Now I've gone and added the test of control or an example of how you could test that. So if there's a document that has been authorized, you can go and inspect that document. If there's a reconciliation that's been done, you can go and re-perform the reconciliation. And if that has been done by the computer, you can put through test data to see that it does reconcile. You can put through test data to see that only authorized people can do certain things through the access controls. Okay, so you can go and add here for control activity, access controls. The risk that they don't record, so they have a control to ensure completeness, pre-numbered documents and reconciliation. So a pre-numbered document I can inspect, reconciliation we can re-perform. If there's a computerized pre-numbered document, then you can do your sequence test.
testing that control that they have. Where they don't record correctly a risk because the amount or date or details are wrong, they have to have a control to ensure accuracy, cutoff and classification, your reconciliation, your segregation of duties, and now those specific IT controls being screen aids and program checks will achieve that. And so a reconciliation that's been done, I can re-perform but I can also then do test data to see that those screen aids and program checks are actually working according to what they should be doing. And where there's a risk of theft, safeguarding of assets, access controls, physical access controls, now there could be logical access controls to protect information that could be stolen and so you can observe the physical access controls and you can test the logical access controls through your test data attempt to gain access with the wrong passwords and I should not be allowed okay let's go and do our final class example I'm going to round up your reading time to three minutes, but then your writing time I'm going to take down to 11 minutes so that you are within the time allowed for the question. <laughs> 